Hello, and welcome to the video lecture example of how to use a subquery. Again, sit back and relax. Right, kind of clear. Let this wash over. Uh, because once you get, you're ready to start getting paid to write SQL. So, here we're going to start off um, explaining. So, we're going to use the same example that's in the textbook. What we want to do is we want to show all of the orders that are associated uh, I want to show all the orders whose order uh, who are associated with the natural ash finish. Okay, so let's start off um, with the subquery, right? So the subquery is going to be um, select. Oop, and I'm not typing. We're going to select star from product T. Where, and in this case, let's just start off with uh, the product finish being equal to natural ash. Again, always a good idea to um, start simple and work our way up. So we run this, and nothing comes back. <laughs> um, so what did I do? Natural ash and, and the A, the capital A should make any difference. So let's look at our product table, shall we? Because apparently there's nothing, uh, there's nothing in the product T table. I don't know why this is hesitating to show us the products, but it is. All right, so here's our product table. Uh, right, there is no natural ash. <laughs> so that's good. Um, so let's do this. Let's use oak. See, and this is why I test things. Because if we would have written the whole thing out and then run it and had nothing come back, we would have been confused and then we'd be troubleshooting. Eh, let's do this step by step. So I run this, boom, there we go. We get product IDs. Uh, we get product information uh, whose product finish is associated with oak. Fantastic. So that's where we start. And then if we wanted to, we could add in our the correlated part of this. Right? So the other condition that we want to satisfy is that the product ID is equal to the order line T dot product ID. So when we run this, as we were expecting, um, the database management system doesn't know where to get orderline t dot product ID from, so it prompts you for it. Just as if you had misspelled a column and you get this parameter value pop up. So this query, as it is, will not run on its own. So that really is the first test. Uh, when you're writing a correlated subquery, you have to make sure that your subquery will not run on its own. That's one of the, the first most basic rules of a correlated subquery is that it can't run on its own. It needs information from an outer query. So let's write our outer query. Let's create a new query window. Again, we'll close out of this show table and we'll go right to SQL. And let's select distinct order ID. from the order line T table. And we run that. So here, we've got our order IDs. Um, we could show more than that, but we won't. But in the order line table, there are certainly product IDs. Right? If we looked at the order line T table, we see that sure enough, there are product IDs displayed in this table. So, what we want to do is we want to combine this with our inner query. I'm going to copy this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say where exists this. All right? 
So now when this runs, what, it, what it's going to do is in order to get this order line T product ID value, it's going to reach out to the outer query where the order line T dot product E is. So this is going to loop, right? It's going to operate, it's, correlate, it's correlated. So for each line in the order line T table, it's going to pass that value into the inner query and it's going to be evaluated to see if the product finishes oak. And if it is, the select star is going to return everything from this table and we're going to get a result set back. So now when I run this, we see that we get a list of our nine order IDs that were associated with products whose product finish was oak. So far so good. One more efficiency. All right, so now this is uh, more efficient because again this is going to only operate on as many rows are in the order line T table and when we do the distinct that means we get a much shorter list than the entire order line T table. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Um, and this sometimes throws some students, so I'm going to uh, say this slowly. Uh, instead of selecting star, right, which would be loading up memory with every column's uh, data element uh, for the returned row or rows, um, all exists is looking for is anything to be returned. Anything. So I suggest selecting as little as possible. So I'm going to select zero in the inner query. And this is much more common, either selecting zero or maybe selecting an X or something like that. Something very, very small that doesn't take up a lot of memory space. And sure enough, if I run this, it still returns the same information, only I'm using memory a lot more efficiently this way. All right, so this is an example of how to use a correlated subselect. The idea being that the inner query operates for only as many rows as exists in the outer query. So the idea would be that the outer query should have as few rows as possible because this entire process is only going to operate on that many rows. Okay? So for instance, um, if you had, uh, we really should almost reverse this. We should select from the product table and pass other information in, but in this case we're looking for order IDs. So this gives us a very distinct list of our order IDs. We can then use this as a subquery, couldn't we? You want to get crazy? Let's get crazy. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to select star from order T, where the order ID is in this whole thing. How about that? Is that crazy or what? I run that and there's all my order information for that. So that would be an example not only of a correlated subquery but a nested correlated subquery nested inside another subquery. Ooh, creepy. Looks complicated but again since we did this step by step piece by piece it was fairly easy to put together. Alright, so that ends my video lecture on correlated subqueries.